Hey folks, since we are homeschooling these days, um, Ms. Sazerowski and I thought we would videotape us doing the lab for the gas law unit that we have on the docket. So I have all the equipment out here. Um, I've got a little data table that I will give you all the information for. And um, yeah, so just watch me do the video, kind of take some mental notes, if not physical notes. Um, and then I'll share the data with you and you guys can work the calculations and analysis up from my data. So um, we are reacting magnesium, which I have already weighed out. There's a little piece right here um, with HCl, hydrochloric acid. Here's my six molar hydrochloric acid. We're going to produce hydrogen gas. So obviously the hydrogen gas is what we're interested in. Now, how do we collect the hydrogen gas? Way back at the beginning of the year, you guys saw these. These are udiometers. They are designed to collect gases because the open end is at the bottom and the closed end is at the top. So we're gonna fill this up with some water and we are going to use it uh, to collect the gas. Um, so what I'm gonna do is first off, I'm gonna put about 10 milliliters of HCl in the udiometer because we need the HCl to rack with react with the magnesium. Okay, then I'm gonna fill it up the rest of the way with water and I forgot to grab a bottle, so we'll see how much I can get out of this one. All right, that worked. Okay, so I have my udiometer all set up. Um, now I'm gonna get the magnesium ribbon ready. Well, the magnesium and the HCl have to come into contact. And if I just put the magnesium in the udiometer, it's gonna fall out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my magnesium ribbon and I'm going to create a cage out of copper wire for it. So you can see me here just kind of wrapping it up. I'm trying to cover all sides so that as the magnesium reacts and gets smaller, it doesn't fall out of this cage. If it falls out of the cage, there's a big error. Um, so just bear with me as I wrap this guy up. Got the end sticking out here, got to get him covered. So I'll hold it a little closer to the camera when I'm all done, you can see what it looks like. Um, all right, so taking this, you can see the magnesium in the cage. Um, and then covered by the wire. I'm going to do a few more loops this way just to be safe. So now I want to just verify that the magnesium fits in my udiometer. So I'm just going to take it and make sure that I can insert it. Okay, works just fine. So I'm going to pull it back out, add some more water to it. Oops. I'm running out of water. Add a little bit more water to it. I'm going to put the magnesium cage about an inch to two inches down through. I'm going to use this extra piece of wire. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to use this extra piece of wire just to wrap around the udiometer to keep it suspended. So when I invert this, the magnesium is not going to fall out. But the one important thing to remember, if you guys were doing this, I'd have you practice, but I've done it enough times I don't need to. What we're going to do is run a, I'm going to put my finger on top of this. I'm going to invert the udiometer, turn it upside down, and put it in this water bath. And so the idea is I've got the water bubble overflowing so that I don't get any air bubbles in here. Because if I get air bubbles in, that's going to cause a problem with my volume reading. So here goes. So I don't have to worry about the HCl. It's way down here. This is all deionized water. All right. So one, two, three, invert, submerge, and there we go. And it's unfortunate that you are not here to see the details because it's really cool. You can see the very dense HCl trickling down through the water um, because of the difference in density. Oh, you can see it, nice. Um, so it's gonna move down through the tube and when it hits the HCl, or the magnesium rather, you're gonna to start to see bubble swarming. So now say a quick little prayer to the chemistry gods because we want this reaction to go fast because you know, if you have to sit here and watch this happen for the next 20 minutes, we'll all wanna scream. Um, so you can see the bubbles starting to form. 
which is really cool. The hope is the bubbles continue to form um, faster and faster and get bigger and bigger. And within a couple minutes, all the HCl is gone. So I'm not sure what to say while we watch, while we watch this happen. Um, like I said, I'm hoping that the reaction goes pretty fast. In the meantime, um, you hopefully set up your data table. If not, take some time and do that. You have four pieces of data that you have to collect. Um, obviously, I'll be giving you the mass of the magnesium. I'll be giving you the volume of the hydrogen gas that was generated, um, the temperature of the water, which I need to grab a thermometer. Um, so just amuse yourselves by watching those bubbles rise for the moment. And then the fourth piece of data that you're going to need is the barometric pressure, which I actually just get off a website on my computer. Um, so there we go. The bubbles are generating nicely now. Reaction's happening pretty fast. I'm going to keep flicking it to make sure that the bubbles rise. We don't get any pockets around the magnesium. But I think this should be a pretty good one. So we should be able to finish this in just a couple minutes. All right, so let's fill in some data. Um, if you, like I said, if you have your data table set up, um, you should have the atmospheric pressure or the barometric pressure. I can't remember what we called it in the lab notebook. It is 102.8, 102.8, and that is kilopascals. So the weather outside is, oh, it's snowing. Wow. Okay, so it is a little cold, um, and obviously there is precipitation moving in because it's snowing. Um, so it makes sense that the barometric pressure is a little bit low. Um, high pressure is usually associated with nice days, and low pressure is usually associated with not so nice days. Um, so check this out. Isn't that cool? Look at all those gas bubbles going. Um, this is going to be finished really quickly, which is good for all of us. Um, all right, so. Let's back, go back to the data table. I know you're mesmerized by the gas. Um, barometric pressure, 102.8 kilopascals. Magnesium is, I weighed it on the analytical balance. So magnesium is 0 0.0422 grams. 0 0.0422 grams. And check that out. Our reaction is done. So I can get the last two pieces of data. I'm gonna hold the thermometer in here. Um, get the temperature of the water. Um, the magnesium HCl reaction makes it rise a little bit, so this is not um, the same temperature as it came out of the tap, so I want to measure the temperature after I'm done with the reaction. Okay, so I'm looking at it, and I've got 21.5 degrees Celsius. Now remember, you got to convert that to Kelvin to do your calculations. 21.5 degrees Celsius. And then the last piece of data is the volume of the gas. So to get this, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I get the pressure inside equal to the atmospheric pressure. The only way to guarantee that is to get this water level to the same height as the water on the outside. That's the only way I know for sure that the pressure is the same. So I'm gonna lower it and you probably can't see this because there's so many layers going on. But reading that volume, I am now at 45, it's not quite straight, it's a little hard. All right, mm, yeah, 40. 45, I'm gonna call it 0 0.9, 45.90, we'll just set it that. So we got a little bit of, little bit of potential for error there. Um, plus or minus 0 0.02 milliliters. Um, so what did I say, 45, 45.9, 45.90 milliliters. All right, so we have our four pieces of data. So let me hold it up for you. Um, Here's the four pieces of data. Atmospheric pressures in kilopascals. The magnesium is in grams, the temperature is in Celsius, and the volume is in milliliters. We're doing this lab to try and calculate R. 
we want to calculate the gas constant. And if you remember, the gas constant has the units liters, atmospheres, Kelvin, and moles. So you've got some conversions to do with this data in order to see how closely this set of data gives us R, the 0.082 value. Um, so that's your task. The calculations and the analysis are all about figuring that out. Um, so hopefully you had a chance to see what I was doing. Um, figuring out errors might be a little hard based upon what you saw me do, but think about it. So the gas was being generated in this tube. The magnesium was hitting this and coming out the bottom. Um, think about where some errors could happen. I guess we're going to have to be a little flexible on that one since you were actually here to observe it. Um, but do your best. Um, but let's see how close you can get to R. This is usually a pretty good lab, um, pretty low percent error. Um, so good luck with it, and we'll see you when we see you. Bye, guys.